The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Tuesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets catching a bid from last night. You're talking about an S&P right now. You're positive by almost 60 points from where we were last evening. Crude pulling back in pretty dramatic fashion. We're under 100 bucks. We're at $96.70, down from 130 Just over a week ago, we take a look at the markets. Friday's action in the S&Ps. 4326, you trade down almost 200 S&P points. Yesterday's action, when you look at the action, Monday, you accelerate lower. Yesterday, you come in, when you look at the pre-market, you had the S&Ps at 4180, you trade down to 4129, but since then, quite the acceleration from about 5 a.m. Eastern time, that low made in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're up 109 points right now. You were at a 12,000 handle, you're at 13,152. Dow's up 153 points right now, inching towards 33,000, only 12 points off that level. And you get the Russell, up by six points at 1943. We've jumped to crude. Quite the pullback for crude. You back it up a week ago. We were at 129.44. We're trading at 96.57. You had been as low as 93.54. I mean, you look at the moves in this crude contract. We just got a $3 spike just in the less than the last two hours. And you can't even see that spike barely on this chart because you go from 110 just almost Sunday evening. Yes, 110 Sunday evening. By Tuesday morning's opening bell, we're trading at 96.51 right now. We jump to gold. Continuing to give it up as gold down thirty-seven dollars at nineteen twenty-three. We get a Fed meeting starting today. We have an announcement tomorrow, uh, two p.m. Eastern Time press conference, two thirty on Wednesday. All but assured, you will get a hike of a twenty-five basis points. And finally, maybe we get a slight reprieve in terms of yields, but don't call it a reprieve, folks, because we got yields right now at basically two point one percent. We had a 1.6 handle to back things up, folks, uh, a week ago Sunday evening. You trade from 129 handle to a 124 handle in about a week. Since then, we have bounced a bit, but you're sitting on the yield 2.1%. I mean, think about it. There's half a percentage point that yields on a 10-year basis went up in the last about seven or eight days. Remarkable on that 10-year, but on this session, we have the yields a little bit lower with prices up 14 ticks on the 10 year at 125.07. And we jump over to the VIX volatility index right now sitting at 32.07. You were inching towards 34 overnight as you had in the markets continue in some negative action. We got a few headlines to jump to uh, on a day that we have a Fed meeting beginning, on a day that we have oil coming below $100. A lot of the headlines having to do with futures gain as oil plunge eases inflation fears. I was talking about it beginning of this month. It's March 15th now. We're basically about halfway through the month when we got CPI data from the month of February last week. You had gas prices up 6.6% for the month of February. That contributed one third of the impact to the CPI data. As of, I think it was March 10th, yes, when CPI data came out last Thursday, at that time, you had gas prices up almost 20% already for the month of March, 10 days into it. Now, will we see some easing throughout the rest of the month? But nonetheless, we are going to see some harsh inflationary numbers from the month of March when we get CPI data in April because of these oil prices, because of these gas prices. Uh, even if we get some easing at the crude price is going to take at least a few days for those gas prices to come down. March numbers for CPI should be a big number, to say the least, as we have the Fed uh, lifting off, as they say. All right, the other one we have to jump to here is China. So I think I got like three or four articles here talking about China. Uh, relentless selling in China stocks evoked memories of 2008 crash. We're going to jump to Alibaba and JD in a moment. We talked about them yesterday, man. Let's just jump to them right now. Alibaba, 
it's just gap away, gap away, gap away. We were at 100 bucks on Wednesday. You're going to open at $73 on Alibaba shares. You're down more than 26%. The slide continues, uh, JD. The slide continues as well. We close at about 43. We're going to open under 42. You were at 40.55 last night. And jumping to it, uh, yeah, China's market meltdown has traders rushing to buy protection. How about $4.5 trillion? That's just Chinese and Hong Kong stocks. $4.5 trillion of wealth has been lost since the peak just in China and Hong Kong. You got cost of hedging. Chinese shares is at a record versus the S&P 500. Uh, yeah, is that it? I guess that's it too. I thought I had three. I'll look for another one um, and maybe I do. No, the market meltdown. Ah, yes, I thought I had at least three up here. And then they got five charts showing the brutal two-day sell-off in Chinese stocks. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this throughout the hour. Be interesting to see in terms of where China goes in aligning themselves, how closely to Russia. But they have a two-prong war going on uh, with their economy, is one way to put it in terms of quite the slowdown that they're going to be dealing with when you got cities like Shenzhen shutting down Foxconn, making Apple products. You have ports there that are shipping things out. Uh, a city of 24 million people just shutting down. That is going to play into things. At the same time, you have risks going on for the geopolitical affairs uh, taking place. All right, we jump around to some of the news domestically. How about AMC? This one's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Excuse me, as you have AMC using their funds raised during the meme craze to buy a gold miner. That's right. News out this morning. Uh, agreed to purchase a stake in Nevada Metal Miner. They announced Tuesday they're going to spend $27.9 million in cash for the deal. They're going to receive 23.4 million shares of the company, Highcroft Mining Holding Corp. Not familiar. Uh, and an equal amount of stock warrants. The deal would make AMC the owner of roughly 22% of the company. I mean, the CEO alludes to the fact that normally you would not see a movie theater chain having the expertise to be a player in the gold mining segment. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. First thing I thought is, are they going to start like printing off silver coins or something like that? Crazy, man. Um, the AMC, I'm not sure, I forget the guy's name. Uh... What's his name? Adam Aaron. A. Aaron. His name is literally A. Aaron. Uh, he's leaning fully into the, the meme stock acceleration. And AMC on that news catches a bid. You're up by 50 cents to 14.13. This thing has had quite a ride to negative prices from the peak of 72 bucks. Uh, you're back to 13 bucks. That's back to last May. You're back to a price level. Uh, far off the highs, but interesting to see. You never can be too sure when that's going to catch a bid uh, from the Reddit GameStop uh, mania. Now, as I say, we jump over to GameStop. GameStop has their earnings out later this week. They're trading up three bucks to 82, closed at 78. Uh, this stock basically at lows it hasn't seen since the beginning of the craze early last year for GMC, GME. But how's that going to play? AMC spending 28 million bucks to buy. A 22% stake in a gold miner? I imagine they have more plans than just that. But maybe they don't. 1356. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hanks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up 26 points. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100 up 116, Dow, off, Dow up 166, and we have crude off $6.67 right now, trading at 96.32. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They break down the day's market action. They got some great guests on the programs, uh, talking defined risk, talking a little options. Kevin Hanks, we're talking a little bit of crude. Back under $100 this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. You know, markets are moving, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, we, we, we discuss a lot how commodities will often price in the absolute worst-case scenario. Uh, they, 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 they do that quite often, Tommy. So $130... That was a pretty high level for uh, for crude oil to get to, and so the you know the descent from one hundred and thirty dollars has been fast and vicious, and so but that's a lesson for how these commodities move. They often price in the exact highest level. I'm frankly a little surprised it happened this quickly because there's been no real clear resolution in. Ukraine or, or anything going on there or disruptions, but certainly crude oil has come, you know, down pretty hard from its peak level. Yeah, pretty remarkable. I got the crude contract right now up the, on the Thinkorswim platform, Kevin. March 1st, uh, we had a price basically right where we're trading at right now of $95. Within five days, you got to 130 bucks. That's five trading days. And now seven trading days, we're right back to 95 bucks, man. Uh, and that is 50%, Kevin. If you go back to December 2nd, which is crazy. I did this yesterday. I couldn't believe almost. December 2nd, crude was at $62, man. It's only March 15th. Um, right back to about the 50%, which is where that area is as well, sitting at 96 bucks. Uh, we got markets catching a bit today, Kevin. We got some PPI numbers out there that are pretty high, not too surprising uh, in light of what's going on. We have a Fed meeting starting today. How about the route in China going on continuing, though, Kevin? Pretty interesting, uh, the destruction there. I think I read this morning, you're talking about now $4.5 trillion of destruction in terms of China and Hong Kong equities. Uh, the floor doesn't seem to be anywhere in sight right now as they keep gapping lower, it seems, overnight. What do you, what's your take on what's going on with China right now? 
Yeah, pretty interesting uh, how their their zero tolerance policy and their shutdown for a week. Not only that, with the overall restrictions they're putting on some of their companies, is really create you know wreaking some havoc in that com- in that. And when you look at Chinese companies traded in the U.S. and the pressure that they're under, man, you're talking about a serious amount of equity taken out of these companies. So, yeah, um, I would, you know, a lot of people think that the China stocks are now untradeable. You know, it's hard. you got to remember something. You're trading a company controlled in many ways by a communist government. And so you, you, you've witnessed over the last, well, three to six months what can happen when they decide for basically a tone change or they decide that they don't have the amount of power over these companies that they'd like to have, like in, if they were in the West. And so, yeah, you're, you're, you know, you're seeing kind of a serious power play going on right now in China. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, and you make some great points, man, in terms of untradeable, because of course you can trade it, but I, I, the the risks are just unquantifiable, at least in my, con- uh, you know, understanding of geopolitical uh, what's going on in Russia, because how can you quantify a risk? Where part of that risk, right, is that the Chinese government just owns your company and does whatever they want. But did not imagine some of these companies, Kevin, I'm in terms of Alibaba up here in the Thinkorswim platform, back to 2015 prices, JD.com, 2015 prices seven years ago. Uh, but as you say, I read an article this morning talking about hedge funds running, probably because that risk is just unquantifiable how you, how you factor right. in that risk. With everything going on, Kevin, we got a Fed meeting starting today. What are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 noon this afternoon? Lifefolio came to us with a presentation today that they're going to do on Etsy and everything that they're, they're going on and their views and some of their data they have on Etsy. So we're gonna, what we're going to do, we're going to turn that into a theme. We're going to go Shopify, Etsy, and then Amazon on today's show, Tommy. All Man, online tell you. e-commerce companies. I like it, Kevin. I was looking at Etsy myself this morning. Just uh, it's it's you can't help but look at some of the pullbacks in some of these equities, folks. Etsy from twenty nine bucks up to three hundred and seven bucks late last year. You're back to one eighteen. You talk about Shopify. Shopify, great platform. We use Shopify for TFNN, Kevin. Uh, Seventeen sixty two down to five twelve. Amazon, not nearly the pullback there, but still pretty substantial, man. Almost a thousand bucks off the high. From 37.73 to 28.37, uh, and 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 for a final take, Kevin, what's your take on, on the yields on the rise? 1.6 percent, 1.6 handle at least to to 2.1 percent right now. Uh, as we come into a Fed, where do you see some of those ten years going? As we, it's pretty interesting. Not often do you come into a liftoff, right, where the Fed is going to start hiking for six, seven times potentially, and today's the day they start that meeting. Yep, I think. Um what I think is markets love to go to big numbers, and 2% in the 10-year yield is a big number, Tommy. And I expect that number to be sticky around there. And so I would expect Jerome Powell to do what he said he was going to do, which is raise rates by a quarter. The question is, does he come out dovish or even hand, you know, even keeled in his comments afterward? And so I would – I mean – you know, the, these 10-year notes have really sold off hard, and that the corresponding yields have gone up. So I would think many times, whether they should or not, these rates and notes uh, recover some of what they lost, and there's relief in some of the trade. So I'm looking for 2% in the 10-year to be a lot more sticky than it has been the last few days, Tommy. I know that's the billion dollar question. I throw it at you at the end of our discussion, man. What's going to happen with yields, Kevin, as we start the liftoff with the Fed discussion uh, meeting today? And yeah, just a remarkable pullback. I got it up on the Thinkorswim platform, man, on a daily basis. That price of that 10 year, quite a downtrend. It would make sense as we come into hiking. Um, but yeah, that pullback in the last seven days, man, just historic. Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, the education as always. We'll be watching, man. Etsy, Shopify, and Amazon, three great companies. We look forward to the show today, Kevin. You have a great Tuesday. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too. Always a pleasure, man. Folks, tune in every trading day, fast market, 12 noon Eastern time. 
Kevin Hinks, Tom White, they have an outstanding experience of knowledge, folks, that they've gained over their careers in this business. Uh, quite a time to be learning when you have the VIX sustaining levels above 20 or 30 right now. You have a Fed meeting going on. We have a PPI happening right now this morning showing 10%. Let's pull that number over here as we come into the break waiting for the open. Uh, and we have a Fed meeting starting today with an announcement due tomorrow at 2 p.m., Press conference at 2.30, and we have crude sitting at $100. We still have earnings going on. We got GameStop, as I said, late in the week. I think we got FedEx as well as we're coming into the end of the earnings season. They'll be out with their numbers. Just a lot of volatility, which is a great time, folks, to be learning in this market. Very difficult, especially in options, to be learning the options trade uh, or trading when you have a VIX that's so low because you're very limited with some of the strategies that you can use when you have a VIX I mean, it's tough to remember, folks, as we come into this break. You had a VIX that was sustaining levels of 11, 12, 13 for an extended period of time. Not so much the case these days. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets catching a bid on the open as well. S&P's up 33 points right now. Man, you put this thing on a daily, though. Can you even find a bounce recently? Talk about some negative prices, folks. These bounces dwarfed by the negative action we have going on in this market overall since the beginning of the year. Remarkable that we're 10 weeks into this year. 
It seems like it's been negativity the whole time. Ten weeks. That's a lot of negative action, folks. Uh, and now in the Nasdaq, I believe we hit 20 percent overnight in the Nasdaq in terms of a pullback. Talk about a pullback in the Nasdaq. Let's back this up for a three-year weekly to see the full run. Right at that 382, an interesting price level, and that is from the COVID lows of 66.28. You trade up to 16,767. Amazingly, we've given up about 36. 100 points in the NASDAQ 100 uh, from 16,700 to 13,200. And yeah, right at the 382, also a nice area potentially. Maybe we find a bit. A lot of people uh, worried the market goes further, of course, to the downside. Uh, but yeah, a 382, 12,900. 12 and you're talking about a low of 12,942 within 30 points. Also a nice area. It found a bid not once but twice early part of 2020 for that market. You get the Dow up 258. Back to a short-term time frame, we jump to some of the airlines. Good news from the airlines this morning. This is an industry. Yeah, look at this pop, man. Delta up 10%. They got some good numbers coming out this morning. Uh, still, now Delta pulls back to the 618 of the full COVID lows to the highs you had early last year. Maybe that's where you find a bid on Delta. You're up 8.8% for Delta shares today. You jump over United, up 9.4% for United shares today uh, we jump to American up 7% for American domestically Southwest up 7.3% as well JetBlue shares up 5.9% uh, there let's see how the cruises are moving they are Carnival is even up 2.5 cents I saw something about I think Norwegian's got a ship that's stuck they're still up 3.4% uh, Boeing up 1.4% with the market, essentially. Let's see how some of the travel stocks, Airbnb, pretty much the same. So airlines up in a big way, and that's having to do with the fact that their raising revenue outlook as travel demand bounces back faster than expected. Some of the numbers, Delta, okay, they said ahead of an investor presentation that it expects first quarter sales 78% recovered compared to 2019. Pretty remarkable. They're not even at 80% of the business they were doing two years ago. Business travel, probably an absolutely huge, substantial part of that, but international, a big part of that as well, because you look at Delta's at 78 percent. United, they're going to be at about 75 to 80 uh, percent. You have. Let me make sure that was it. United. OK. Yep. And then you do Southwest, though, 92 percent recover. So international airlines doing a lot more, maybe international business, just international travel overall. 75 to 80 percent of the numbers Southwest at 92 percent of the numbers in terms of where they're trading at. And you had United saying system bookings for future travel have improved close to 40 points since the first week of 2022. And business traffic has increased more than 30 points since the peak of Omicron impact in January 2022. <coughs> so big numbers for the airlines. At the same time, as you have crude prices cratering. <coughs> I believe you had American out there saying that they are completely unhedged to the price of crude. So where crude grows... That's where their profits are going to fly. Um, probably did not hedge when they were down at the lows. And just like anything else, not willing to hedge when crude was at $100 to $130 for the cost. So nonetheless, they say we're going to gamble it, ride it out, and ride our losses if they come. But crude back to 95 bucks. some of the airlines uh, accelerating higher on today. And man, when these airlines turn, folks, we are going to have some ways to go. I mean, even Delta. Okay, Delta's trading where you were in June of 2020 crazy when you think about that action in terms of where you were, uh, let alone how long you've been trading above that price level. I mean, anybody trading Delta from October of 2020 is basically in a losing position, which is crazy when you think about it. But at some point, those are going to find a bid, folks. We are going to have a sustained level of travel and getting out. Uh, and maybe you stick to something that has a little bit less volatility domestically like Southwest because, man, you start getting into the international airlines. You ever have geopolitical risk ratchet up in Europe overall? Business travel going to be a tough one to come back as well. That world has changed forever. Uh, Southwest, 92 percent of where they were in terms of 1999. And people just ain't going to stop traveling, folks. JetBlue. Uh, similar action, right? Back to the 618. You're up at 1372. Both of those, which is interesting, right? Right at the 618, Southwest and JetBlue. So if you're thinking about getting in, uh, might be in a good area to take a look. All right, jumping around, what else we have going on? How about rent prices, man? U.S. rent inflation hits a new high led by Miami with a 39% rate. 
Good luck if you're trying to rent a spot in Miami. Florida overall, though, some pretty staggering numbers. Orlando's number two at about 20%. Don't see Tampa on the list, but I bet they're pushing 20% as well, just being around the market. Single family prices overall, 12.6%. That is overall for the entire country, folks. The lowest price, D.C., the lowest inflation. 5.6% for rent. New York, 6.5%. Uh, some of the other big cities out there, Atlanta, right at the median of 12.8. Boston, 13.7%. Vegas at 16.6%. Uh, Phoenix, 189 Pretty staggering numbers when you look at it. Rents in Florida's Orlando and Phoenix, 199 and 189 respectively in January, year over year. Uh, 100 metro areas. Housing has fueled overall consumer price inflation. I would say so. Uh, those are leases, folks. They're signed usually for a year at least. They do not go down. Very rarely will you sign a, a lease, right? And I'm almost exaggerating. And then 12 months later, the leasee gets to uh, negotiate with their landlord that they want to pay less. Very few scenarios would have that play out. COVID was one of them. We saw in Manhattan right? Huge, huge uh, destruction in terms of leases. Well, that's all gone. And uh, Manhattan rentals, leases are actually above where they were in 2019. So it's not just the hottest markets out there. It's everywhere. As you see uh, low inventory for housing, I mean, that's never going to change for our, the foreseeable future. I shouldn't say never. It's not going to change for the foreseeable future, folks. Those houses have been taken off the market forever. They've been securitized, and there's no reason for Wall Street ever to sell them off, uh, especially when you have rates where they are right now. You see rates skyrocket that, uh, that makes it much more expensive to hold those houses. Maybe that changes things slightly, but, man, you're talking about numbers that are pretty staggering. Uh, cash in a tough spot right now in a big way uh and these numbers may persist folks in a big way as well that's a perfect segue to this article that i found interesting i've been talking about this a little bit on my program if you've been listening uh we'll tease it right now because i think we're going to head to the break in about 30 seconds or so yeah we got a break coming up in about 30 seconds or so um but something to think about if you have something resembling a 60 40 portfolio because man you may see some big problems here when you're in an environment that we haven't seen in a while, folks. I mean, imagine. Now, a lot of these rate hikes are already priced into the market. Okay, so that's one thing. But if we have market turmoil at the same time that we have rising yields for the next year or two, okay, that is going to bring down the price. Rising yields, okay, lower price, higher yield. Okay, so the price of those fixed investments, okay, fixed return investments you're making will decrease as the yields rise. What happens if markets decrease at the same time? Very possible. We've seen it happen already. Something to think about. We'll take a look at this when we come back. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the markets giving up some of those gains right now. S&Ps, I mean, we just sold off about uh, almost 25 points from where we were just after the open. We're trading at 41.82. You're almost up at 42.10. NASDAQ 100 up 57 points at 13,100. We just gave up 100 quick points in that market. Russell up 6, Dow up 182. We check in on crude. Catches a little bit of a pop. Crude down $6.75 on the session with $3 off the lows you had early this morning. Gold off about 34 bucks. Uh, so back to the article talking about the 60-40 split. One of the things they talk about, just some of the numbers, uh, down more than 10% so far this year because we've seen the market pull back and we've seen yields start to spike as the Fed begins to lift off. Uh, the market says, I mean, just look at Monday. Okay, I'm trying to get this... Uh, yeah, so in the 2000s, okay, the 60-40 portfolio generated a meager 2.3% annual return, numbers that we are not used to recently. Um, you got to recalibrate your brain, folks, in terms of the historical averages, in terms of what you're used to. Uh, the NASDAQ comp index declined nearly 20% this year, and you have treasuries, a broad gauge of treasuries, losing 47 more than any in the year since 1974. Trying to get some other quotes that I was picking in here. I mean, here we have the pullback, but just to take a look at the glimpse, <clears throat> it's something to think about, folks, to think you're protected right now when you're going to have yields lifting off. I'd be very careful thinking that. Uh, but for instance, Monday, Monday's action, you had a huge sell off in the S&Ps. Right. Even from where we were early in the market, 4220 end of the day at about 45, 4160. Yeah. Fixed income did the same exact thing on Monday, okay? Now, yes, we are in a special time period where we have the Fed beginning their meeting right now. But you had the 10-year trading from 125.20 down to 124.27. Quite a pullback over the Monday session. So you're losing on both fronts, okay? Not always the case. Usually, usually there's a hedge there. But things are very interesting in this market and something to keep your eye on folks, especially if you're nearing retirement and you think you have a big hedge there because you could easily um, see that protection not last, especially over this year as things reset a bit. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities that we have moving. Uh, let me find where we're at. And a lot of them talking about the airlines and some of what we already talked about, but some of the stocks are moving this morning as we slide this up here. We covered all the airlines with their acceleration to higher prices. Uh, Toyota announcing additional price production cuts due to semiconductor shortages. A few days after cutting its domestic production by as much as 20%, production of 14,000 minivans will be impacted by the latest announcement. Uh, Toyota, though, with the markets trading higher. Moderna, they are rallying after rising 
11.9% Monday. And guess why? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, COVID cases spiking. Already seeing that we may be dealing with another spike in the U.S. Probably going to look a lot different than the Omicron spike, hopefully. You got the China companies trading higher. Vimeo said it's February, February revenue up 23% compared to a year ago. Vimeo very similar to uh, YouTube. We use Vimeo for some of our... Um, Uploading and video storage, video software company reported 8% increase in subscribers, 13% jump in average revenue per user, VMEO. Now, I'll say that we do use them um, and we do pay for that service. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'd be very careful this one, folks, uh, because even as a somebody that pays for their service, not a huge differentiating factor. Using Vimeo, you have a few extra um, controllable features in terms of embedding that video, making that video private to certain URLs embedded, um, a few more possibilities in terms of control. But yeah, I would be very wary of that equity folks. Vimeo down from 58 bucks when they go public. Uh, May of last year, it's been a one-way trip to lower prices. And even on what looked like some decent numbers, right? There's your pop. We're almost gonna give it back and be back to about 10 bucks for Vimeo shares. Peloton. They're up as Bernstein began coverage with an outperform rating, noting Peloton's healthy underlying business, new management, and its recent stock price plunge. I mean, folks, you got to be looking at some of these stocks that have just gotten crushed. Yes, you risk getting crushed if it trades lower, okay? Um, but at some point, you're dealing with just levels. I mean, Peloton is a company valued at under $7 billion today. At some point, that becomes attractive for bigger players to purchase that company, okay? That's what originally got them the whole hysteria, folks. I mean, it's funny how the market just forgets what happened, right? Uh, they had some earnings here. Well, where was the acceleration on? I think that was right around the same time in terms of maybe some potential suitors coming after them. Uh, you spiked to almost 40 bucks. Was that the spike? Maybe it was a later spike that we saw that happen. Could have been February 24th. I'll have to pull it up. Uh, but nonetheless, we're far below those levels. I mean, somebody like an Amazon folks and Netflix, right? You add that to your repertoire, to your subscriber base. Maybe you ramp it up. Um, if I was running a subscription streaming service and my company was valued at hundreds of billions of dollars and I had Peloton trading at $6 billion, I would begin looking at it. I believe one of the other companies that Bernstein um, talked about being attractive was Nike because of the pullback from 180 to 120 man nike does business in china though uh so you want to be careful there because of their risk there but you're back to 50 percent of the full move from 60 dollar low to 180 on the high you're trading basically right at 120 uh nike up about eight tenths percent one of the other companies that jumps out the pain just never stops man zoom you are getting a two percent pop but boy just remarkable the price levels you're back to now roku is another one that I look at on a contextual basis, you're down 2.7%, okay? But again, you're talking about a company now valued at $13 billion. Uh, when you get into streaming and you think about the amount of money that these companies pay for content, pay for reach, uh, being able to control the entry, the gateway to that streaming platform operation in terms of Roku's and so many houses. Roku's are the backbones to many smart TVs as well. It seems like you're approaching levels, folks, that they would be pretty attractive for somebody to potentially scoop up even just a corner of that business in terms of capitalizing off of the uh, reach that those companies have established themselves towards. Uh, but man, just the pain doesn't stop with Roku down another 2.3% today. Let's check in on some of the China stocks and see how they're reacting on the open. Baba, down another 5%. Let's put it on a daily. It's a gap away every single day, it seems like. Uh, remarkable that I find myself checking these China stocks now every day on the open because it's just so fascinating, the destruction. I mean, you talk about a price level, folks. And look at this, look at this channel line. All right, we're going to back it up a little bit further. This is a daily. It's a daily going back to October of 2020. Pretty well defined. Uh, yeah, we have some outliers to the downside, to the upside. Maybe that's not exactly parallel. Just drew this on the chart yesterday. Um, but even within this downward channel line, okay, maybe getting a little bit oversold on those. And again, I have no equities in these and I have no uh, positions, I should say, and I probably plan on none because yes, maybe you'll catch a bid. But folks, if I'm looking for a bid in a stock that's got destroyed like that, maybe I'm buying, you know, Roku or Zoom or Peloton or something like that that doesn't have the risk of being prone to geopolitical risk and being owned by communist China. 
um, because yes, it might be a good investment, but what is the best investment for your money right now? There are a lot of great companies that have just been destroyed uh, in the US. Peloton is a viable business, not at the multiples they were at at 170, okay? But they probably are a viable business and they're a company that's valued at $6 billion, six and change as of today. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back to finish up the program. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up 26 points. We have the NASDAQ 100 up about 94 points right now. When you jump over, we get the Dow up 179. Jumping over to that crude market, down $7 right now and 45 cents. That's a drop of about 7.2%. Uh, and you jump to that gold market, continuing to hold the lows of about 19.25, down about 35 bucks. We jump over to the VIX, volatility index this morning, 32.11. Uh, we'll finish it up with China. Another great article over here on Bloomberg, not familiar. Um, yeah, I was going to say who wrote it. I didn't even know who wrote it. They don't even have a headline. It's just Bloomberg News is how they put it here. Um, but one comment to take note of. So against that backdrop, and they list in terms of um, Chinese stocks sinking, right? You had foreign minister telling their Spanish counterpart, okay, that Beijing wanted to avoid further damage from the sanctions roiling the global markets. China is not a party directly involved in the crisis and doesn't want to be affected by sanctions even more. I said it on my program yesterday, folks, even if... 
Xi has the same exact goal with Taiwan, which I'm sure he does, all right, uh, in the best interest of his goal would not be to, to, to take the entire brunt of the world and what is being put on Putin. Uh, I imagine he's going to try a much more delicate act to avoid those sanctions. Uh, and even if he's saving all of that, you know, even if he's saving the wrath of the world for when they come into Taiwan, he doesn't want to bring the wrath of the world upon himself right now. Uh, you're going to see them try and anything can happen. War can start from the smallest of ripples in the pond, right? Um, but I agree with the premise of this article that you will try them, uh, you will try to see them attempt to at least straddle that. Uh, consistent with China's appeal to de-escalate the crisis, even as Beijing attempts to blame the U.S. and they spread Russian conspiracy theories about Ukraine biolabs, uh, along with Russian propagandists and Tucker Carlson, unfortunately, on Fox News. Um, but I imagine that you're not going to see China go full defense of Russia uh, because they don't need to. It's that simple. There's, there's too much baggage that comes with that support when they can just uh, feign some support uh, and wait for their own time. Stay tuned, folks. We got a treat. Our man Basil Chapman's up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.